In the Gospel of St. John, Jesus says, In my Father's house there are many mansions. And a minute later he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So is there just one door for all those mansions? This is my side of the mountain. Above me stretches what looks like a lot more climbing. The trail is distinct. The flowers don't grow where the hiking boots have walked, and even the dirt seems lighter on the path than alongside. Every once in a while, somebody with lots of time on their hands has built a cairn, one of those stacks of rocks that marks a trail. It gets windier as we climb, and the trees get smaller and fewer until they're just stunted shrubs. There's a snowfield higher up, and I wonder how long it'll take to get up there. The top of the mountain is still invisible. It's got to be up there, but the face of the mountain near me is in the way. Somewhere, miles away, as the crow flies on the other side of the mountain are other hikers, seeing sand dunes instead of shrunken trees and no snowfield at all. Below them is another river flowing off toward a different ocean. The towns over there have names I have not pondered on my map. There are many paths to God, not so different from the trails on a mountain. I spent my career at Brecht School helping kids to grow up knowing their family's traditions and also knowing and celebrating everyone else's. The first time I learned to wince when somebody said no one comes to the Father except through me was in college when listening to a Baptist pastor who'd been assigned to minister to Christian students at my college. After hearing him say that Jesus was the only way to heaven, I asked what I thought was the obvious question. Does that mean that Jews or Hindus can't get into heaven? And his answer involved a very sad facial expression, but yes, he said, it means that. No one comes to the Father except through me. I guess my liberal high school Jesuit teachers had all emphasized the many mansions part. I assumed that meant Muslim houses and Protestant houses and Buddhist houses. I told him I couldn't agree with him, and he said something about, well, I wasn't disagreeing with him, but with the Bible. And I said, yeah, okay, whatever. And that was probably the last he saw of me. It really bothered me that he didn't even consider me a real Christian, since I'd never specifically accepted Jesus as my very own personal Savior and Lord. Although I felt that I had done that every Sunday morning, at least on the times when I meant it, when a priest gave me communion and I said, Amen. But it's actually pretty easy to dismiss people like that, either by dismissing the Bible altogether, which I'm not willing to do, or say that Jesus was misquoted, which may or may not be true. We'll never know. Or we could just focus on the lines we like and overlook the ones that give us trouble. This is what Thomas Jefferson did with his Bible. Now, what I know of God, I have not just learned in church. I've learned it from a Jewish classmate and a Hindu student and a Muslim congressman who graduated from my liberal Jesuit high school nine years after I did. What I know of goodness, I've learned from plenty of atheists and agnostics. And I've learned it in the darker nights of my own soul when I felt Jesus right there with me all the way through my struggle. In other words, you learn about God on lots of paths, not just the Bible. So, as I said, it would be tempting to just gloss right over no one comes to the Father except through me. But we shouldn't, if for no other reason than it's one of the most memorable lines in the Gospels. and We ought to have a story about what it means. Here's my current favorite story about it, with thanks to the theologian Marjorie Serchaki. It hinges on the word Father, Abba, Papa. God lives in a really big place on the top of Mount Sinai, or Mount Olympus, or Mount Kilimanjaro. The house rambles over the mountaintop and contains many campsites, refuges, cottages, and even mansions. Jesus has climbed on up there and put out blankets and towels in a place where we can wash up, another place where we can get water and something to eat, probably pita bread and hummus. If it were not so, would he have told us that he'd prepared a place for us and even told us that he'd come again and take us there himself? On his climb, Jesus made some of those cairns. He carved some handholds. He planted some wildflowers and even hammered some bolts into the rock face and left some decent rope behind. Now, Lord knows there are other paths. The Hindu path is, I suppose, the slowest one. You go back down the mountainside. You restart with each reincarnated lifetime. The Muslim path does not lead to a parental god. It doesn't pass by the place of the skull. 
It doesn't begin in original sin, but they know Jesus very well on that path. The Mormon path and the path of Mahayana Buddhism are very wide. The climbers get to the top and they head right back down to Sherpa for others, unable to rest until the whole world is admiring the view from their mansion at the top. Quakers take no clergy on their path, no doctrines, except the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking from the silence. So here's the point. No one comes to the Father except through me. If we want to come to the Father, the path leads through Jesus. If we want to connect with Abba, that is Jesus' special gift. Christianity has a unique insight into the intimacy of God. Not a superior insight necessarily, but the only way to Father or Mother God is the path Jesus watered with his tears. His footprints are all over our trail. In them we read forgiveness, laughter, righteous anger, and so much love. Ours is the path of the child. We are children of God. Jesus takes our bags and carries them the last mile. He is the Sherpa of Sherpas, who led by serving. His footprints are our path. Jesus does not tell the Buddhists, I am the Eightfold Path. No one comes to nirvana except by me. Jesus didn't say to the Hindus, I am the master of good karma. No one escapes reincarnation except through me. He did not say, Muslims and Jews cannot come to God because they don't call God Abba. There are many paths to God. Ours goes through a stable in Bethlehem and an empty tomb in Jerusalem. It's not the only story about finding God, but it is our story. Not knowing other stories, I suppose, is like not knowing your cousins or not knowing your neighbors or not learning a few words of another language when you travel. You can get along fine, but isn't life better when our world gets bigger? Don't let that bigness paralyze you like a consumer in the cereal aisle. Oh, there's so many paths and none of them is the right one. How am I ever supposed to choose? Oh, my. Just because I thought the minister I met in college was wrong didn't mean I was supposed to stop climbing. So I studied anthropology, almost became a Quaker, and settled into a path not far around the mountain from the one I was born to. This Catholic boy became an Episcopal priest who now teaches world religions. One last observation about no one coming to the Father except by Jesus. In college, I had an inspirational photo on my wall, a poster of a road stretching through the woods into the distance. The caption read, Life is a journey, not a destination, which is true, but a little misleading. Just because the journey is important doesn't make the destination unimportant. Keep at it. Those mansions are so cool. And we're in very good company.